Following the trial, many of the prisoners are released. With an American-issued travel visa, the blind sheikh makes his way to Brooklyn. Zawahiri heads for Peshawar. In a Cold War move to contain Soviet influence, the CIA under President Ronald Reagan funnels $3 billion to Muslim fighters repelling the Soviet invasion. America's deep and continuing admiration for the Afghan people. Mariah Lucas quit her job so she could devote full time to aiding the Afghan cause. To demonstrate our support that the United States is sharply increasing its assistance. The commemoration of March 21st as Afghanistan Day throughout the United States. In December 1979, the Soviet Union invades Afghanistan, an Islamic country. And an imam at Osama's university named Sheikh Abdullah Azam calls on all Muslims to come to Afghanistan's defense. He will come to be known as the father of modern jihad. Azam is a Palestinian whose hometown was occupied by Israel after the Arabs' crushing defeat in the Six-Day War. More than anyone, it is Azam who has inspired Muslims, including bin Laden, to head to Afghanistan. My father saw in this movement uh, a hope of uh, bringing the Muslim world to the power again. Hutaifa is the son of Abdallah Azam. He recalls how he watched his father take the young Osama bin Laden under his wing. I have lived with Osama bin Laden for more than 12 years, very close to him. At that time, Osama met my father as a teacher in the university. Abdallah Anas was studying to become an imam in his home country of Algeria when he heeded the call to jihad. We used to watch his film. You know that, that, that actor, uh, Sylvain? Uh, and it was completely advertisement for the jihad of Afghanistan. What you see here are the Mujahideen soldiers. Holy warriors. I was one, one of the formers, uh, the founders of the Services Bureau with Sheikh Abdullah Azam. And uh, in the same uh, late 84, uh, Osama bin Laden joined us as a founder also in the Services Bureau. He was uh, from a rich family uh, and he was able to spend all the expenditure of the office. When you talk about Zawahiri, it's another case. Zawahiri, when he came to Afghanistan, he came with his own idea from a, from a struggle and rivalry between Jama'at al-Jihad, his jihadi group in Egypt, and Muslim Brotherhood. So they hate each, each other. So when he was released from jail and he came to Peshawar, he wasn't part of Services Bureau. He wasn't part with Sheikh Abdullah Azam and Bin Laden and us. His priority, how to, how to protect people here not to follow the Muslim Brotherhood. And that as a consequence, not to follow Abdullah Azam because automatically he will lead them to Muslim Brotherhood. This, this is just what he was in his mind, it's not true. But I think he was completely paranoid by what, what happened to Egypt between him, rivalry between Muslim Brotherhood and the jihadi group. And he brought that struggle to Peshawar, which is, doesn't exist. Strange things happening when this Zawahiri came to Peshawar. From the first day, they were enemies of Sheikh Abdullah Azam. Zawahiri's views on jihad are far more radical than those of Sheikh Abdullah Azam. You don't believe what kind of level of hate. If you have a different opinion to him, you are out of Islam. You are infidel. This man is bad, this man is not good, this man is less Muslim, busy with, uh, with classifying people. If you vote, if you go to election, if you believe in democracy, if you believe in political, political forming, political parties, your blood is free, should be killed. Sheikh Abdullah Azam had been a professor at Osama bin Laden's university. Now he is in Peshawar on the Afghanistan border where he runs a charity for Afghan refugees while also organizing Muslim recruits eager to join the battle against the Soviets. 
Their recruitment efforts include a monthly magazine, Al Jihad. If we send the, the Al Jihad magazine spread it to the universities of United States or the Islamic centers, because you know it was a resource of helping money for Afghanistan. But the main one was in the, the, the Brooklyn. From the Akifak Refugee Center in Brooklyn, Abdullah Azam and others would go around the country raising money and preaching holy war. Oh brothers, after Afghanistan, nothing in the world is impossible for us anymore. There are no superpowers or mini powers. What matters is the willpower that springs from our religious belief. The world today is arbitrarily ruled by Jews and Christians. The Americans, the British, and others. And behind them, the fingers of international jury with their wealth and their women and their media. The Al-Kifak Refugee Center set up an elaborate support and recruiting network coast to coast with branches in more than 38 American cities. These centers became clearinghouses and recruiting office to support jihad around the world. And they were working legally. Their job only is to, uh, to gather the funds or the, and to get the supports from the people living in the state. This new face appeared suddenly and Sheikh Abdullah Azam introducing him to me, saying this is uh, your brother in Islam, uh, Osama bin Laden. What I remember, this guy is very shy, uh, didn't talk too much. So the impression I got, good guy from Saudi, and that's goodbye. After that, I asked Sheikh Abdullah Azam, and he said, he used to visit me every five, six months, trying to understand what is going on and bringing me some money for the muhajireen. And also Osama bin Laden, he was his student, he was his follower. He was just ready to serve Sheikh Abdullah Azam. Where Osama's marksmanship falls short, his pocketbook makes up. He brings his family's construction equipment to dig defensive tunnels in the Afghan mountains quickly earning him a reputation back home as a brave jihadist. In the weeks that follow the Soviet pullout, Afghan war chiefs, united until then against the invader, get into conflict. Afghanistan rapidly sinks into civil war and utter chaos. Undermined by its Afghan fiasco, the Soviet Union begins its own disintegration. In just a few weeks, the world enters the post-Cold War era. In 80, by the in 89, 90, the number reached maybe three, 4,000 Arabs and Muslims. So it goes up. Until that time, till 88, Osama bin Laden and Sheikh Abdullah Azam and all of us, as a former uh, founders of Services Bureau, we work together. But something, uh, Osama uh, split it himself to us in late 88, and he joined a group uh, called uh, uh, Jama'atul Jihad, Jihadi group, Egyptians. And they were there, uh, the, some names uh, like Zawahiri, like uh, somebody called Sayyid Imam, uh, Abu al-Fadl, and uh, a, a group. They were not part of the Jihad in Afghanistan. They were just part in Peshawar for their own agenda. No one knows because they were very minority. No one knows what they are doing there. And they start working and then they joined uh, to Osama bin Laden, they became a group, and later on they called what we know today, uh, Al-Qaeda. November 1989. Bin Laden's partner, Abdullah Azam, is driving to a mosque in Peshawar, Pakistan with two of his sons. A car bomb explodes, killing them instantly. The murder never solved has the hallmarks of a mob rub out. With Azam out of the way, bin Laden quickly reorganizes the jihad network around himself. In 1989, Azam was assassinated in Pakistan by unknown assailants. 
His death made him a martyr to radical Muslims around the world.